Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload, as you can tell by the title, the thumbnail, and what we're looking at right now, we will be talking about NOAA's US Winter Outlook 2020-2021. I have done this uh, type of video, just uh, talking about their forecast, showing it to you guys, comparing it to mine, just really more for the fun of it than anything else for the past several years, so I f felt like I could do it again this year. And all these people like to see I guess what I have to say, what they have to say, and obviously you can do this on your own. Just type in Noah's Winter Outlook 2020 2021. It came out to the 15th of October. Let's get into this. Well, before we do, I need to uh, say something. If you guys would like to, uh, if you guys like what you're seeing and you enjoy the video, at the end, consider subscribing. And if you are a returning viewer, if you want to like the video, that would be awesome as well. Uh, let's get into this. So, you can see what they sh uh, say right here with their main uh, kind of title, cooler across the north, warmer south, and you may be looking at that and being like, well, no, you know, well, no kidding, that's the usual winter. Again, this is compared to average, so there are years where, you know, this reads cooler uh, south, warmer north, um, but this is a c compared to average, and uh, you can see that they have a ongoing La Nina kind of here in this, uh, in this title. So what I want to show you first is the confidence of the La Nina and why it matters. So uh, notice, you can see right here we have La Nina is likely 80% chance or greater from September through November. This is a very, very confident forecast. Usually the Climate Prediction Center isn't this confident in anything uh, regarding the ENSO. You know, there's only probably a few years per decade that this happens because oftentimes there's a transition, either the El Nino is kind of withering and we're curious to see if another Enzo pattern is going to develop. This case around, you could see La Nina stays uh, confident and bold throughout much of the winter, and that is represented by the models. This model group, I often, uh, they don't know what they're, <laughs> they don't even know what, they don't even know what a La Nina is, this model group. No, I'm kidding, obviously, but this model group right here has been kind of all over the place the whole summer, so really it's not the best forecast, but they have been trending further and further to the south into the negatives, which indicates the La Nina, but you can see they have a huge spread anywhere from a neutral to a, you know, a, almost a record-breaking La Nina. The better model group I, I uh, like to take a glance at is this one right here. This is the CFS version 2 ensemble meme. Mean, I've been watching too much memes apparently. Alright, uh, you can see that this model group is very, very concise. Look at the amount of spread they have. I mean, th that's a minute amount of spread compared to this. This is like, um, <laughs> that's just a giant spread. This is a small spread. What do I else have to say? I mean, you can see for yourself. And the confidence brings it down into a negative 1.5, almost negative 2. So it pro possibly a very strong La Nina developing, which, you know, the fact that it is a potential strong La Nina may already skew the forecast, um, in its own way, not just the fact that it's a La Nina. So there's many levels to this, but you could see that they do take it back out pretty quickly into by the time it's springtime, almost a neutral Enzo. So almost, you could see like a parabola, like almost like an absolute value. <laughs> so a very, very sharp downhill and uphill. Um, and you may be wondering why does this matter? Well, as you can see, this is they're basing a lot of their forecast off the ongoing La Nina. Let's take a look at uh, their actual... By the way, this text over here, basically what they talk about is that the drought may worsen for a good portion of the United States, ex um, including the Southwest, especially those areas. You can see more than 45% of the United States is um, experiencing drought right now, and they may uh, you know, add on to that. There will be a few areas that decrease the drought, but... You know, ba 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 boop let's look at their actual forecast. Notice, winter 2020, this is what they have. You remember, they said cooler north, warmer south, but they definitely think that a lot of the south will be, or a lot of the, a bigger portion of the U.S. will be warmer than cooler. They have a very sliver, almost, you know, like a small portion of the United States that is cooler, and that's just really Washington, Idaho, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota. If you're watching this and you're from the Northwest, consider yourself lucky because uh, your forecast area is the most confident. It looks as if your area may be seeing lots of precip, lots of cold, and for, like, ski resorts and all of that good stuff, it looks to be a amazing year. And if I were to bet on one thing in this forecast, it would be the Northwest. Anything else may change, and um, obviously that may change as well, the Northwest, but that I have the most confidence in, so does NOAA. You can see 
warm south and east, warm north, really just, an, or cool north, just the northwest, kind of in a little bit of the plains. So definitely more of a warmer pattern rather than a cool pattern. As we look at their precipitation, you can see again, above average precipitation lies up a lot of these areas here with the cool weather. So that would, in, you know, include above average snowfall and rain when it wouldn't be cold enough, but Again, usually these locations see a lot of snow, regardless, especially when it's colder. Um, notice Great Lakes also seeing above average precip. So you saw that Illinois, Indiana, I'm just giving a random example here. The northern locations of Indiana, Illinois, most of the states actually, uh, are in a, in a white coloring. And that's an equal chance of a probability of being above or below. So just because you, you, if you're in a white color, which is an equal chance, you may be, say, just looking at average temperatures. Let's just go with the benefit of the doubt here and say you see average temperatures you would see during a typical winter. By seeing average temperatures that you typically see with above average precipitation, you would still see additional snow. You know, if you see 30, you would probably see something closer to 40, not necessarily because of the cold air, but because of the abundance of precipitation. So when the cold air is present throughout any portion of the winter, the precipitation is there for the cold air to use. So it takes advantage of that and it could lead, you know, to above average snow. But now I want to go into the part of the forecast or the video where I talk about um, why these forecasts may, aren't as accurate as unfortunately we hoped for, uh, in a, you know, based on past events. You don't have to believe me, but um, I could show you what I've seen and hopefully then you could uh, get along as to you know, get to what I'm talking about. What am I, you know, NOAA and just in general, winter forecasting is the hardest thing in weather. It's oftentimes miserably inaccurate or luckily accurate. And unfortunately, that seems to be the case with no matter what agency you are, no matter what, you know, how many forecasters you have. You know, NOAA's meteorologists are extremely, extremely skilled. The most talented meteorologist in the U.S., if not the world, the U.S. has a very good meteorological system. And they still miss a lot of the forecasts, and that's unfortunately where we are right now. And this isn't a showcase, what I'm trying to show here, of how inaccurate NOAA is. What I'm trying to display is how tough Mother Nature is to predict. That's what I'm really getting at here, because I'm not trying to level myself any higher than these forecasters. They are way, way, way more qualified than I am. I just still want to show you that this should not be taken uh, as set in stone. They obviously make that clear, but a lot of people still seem to misinterpret that. Let's get into what I wanted to talk about. 2010-2011 winter outlook of uh, NOAA. Strong La Nina bringing more extremes. That is almost, you know, exact copy of what we have this year. You could see warmer across the south. They had a bit more cooler across the west coast, California, but generally the same. And you could see this was a precip outlook, very, very similar to what we have this year. Um, just almost like a copy and paste with a few differences. Um, there was less drought back then, so um, that, that may have played a role, but... Let's see what the actual outcome of this winter was. 2010-2011, I plugged it into the composite monthly mean anomaly. This is what it turned out to be. I, honestly, I don't see any resemblance at all of what, what their forecast was showing. Um, you could see cooler across the north and northwest a bit. Northwest was normal. The northern plains were a bit cooler. The south was supposedly warmer, if not hot. Um, and you can see it was pretty much cooler. Not a single place of the United States was above average, ex excluding extreme portions of Maine. And you can see the precipitation. I didn't have it. I don't have it showed up here, but just based off the temperatures, which are usually easier aspect to forecast um, because they're more predictable. You can see they just they didn't really do the best job. Let's take a look at another forecast, if that didn't convince you. United, um, United States 2013-2014, again, pretty similar to what we have this year. Um, warm across the south, maybe the northeast, and a bit cooler across the north. And again, this was a, uh, without a strong influence from El Nino or La Nina, it was a neutral, so they said that this would, winter would be less predictable. Still, though, this was their forecast, and this was the outcome. I mean, as you can see, it was nowhere close to the accuracy. Uh, the southwest was a bit warmer with the northwest. Those areas were left mainly uh, normal. It was really just the central south that was warmer, and you can see they got a pretty good dose of cool weather. And again, not much resemblance between their forecast and what actually happened. Let's take a look at one more. 2009-2010 uh, winter forecast. Look at that. 
warm across the north, north uh, northern two-thirds of the country, cooler across the southeast. So as you can see, this is what was forecasted, and this is actually what happened. Um, they did predict correctly the southeast. It was cooler across those areas, but it was more expansive, uh, quite significantly more expansive than they thought. Um, if you were to go back, you could see they thought it would be just... Um, you know, maybe limited to a few states in the southeast, but instead, uh, really just above average temperatures were limited to the UP and uh, maybe the northwest and portions of the northeast. Everywhere, everywhere else was cooler. 2018, um, 2019 was another winter that occurred just a few years ago, two years ago, and you could see that this was a forecast above average for anywhere other than the southeast. The southeast still maybe, um, you know, warmer but has the biggest chance of being cooler and what actually happened was quite really opposite this was like an embarrassing forecast for them because it was like in a recent time frame and you could see it was pretty much as opposite as it could get warm in the southeast cool in the west northwest and northern plains where it was forecasted to be warm so definitely a, a pretty big failure on that part right there but that's not really a failure that's just unpredictability of mother nature and again these are the best weather sources out there and you could still see that even they have a tough time doing this they're obviously have they have years where they get things right but it's obviously way easier to get forecasts wrong than right and uh mother nature is unpredictable so it's very you know i want you to guys to take this year's forecast with um with the, not as much confidence as you know sometimes noah makes it seem but um they they do make it pretty clear that it's not all accurate and yeah, so this is the, again, forecast for this year. Um, we'll see how it plans out. At this point, I don't agree with this. I think I was going to show you my forecast, but I, uh, I'm not going to because we're running low on time here. But I basically extended the cool air to about these locations. And then anywhere south could be warm or, you know, kind of a uh, near average temperature, which uh, is, you know, significantly much more cool air. I included than NOAA. We'll have to see um, which one turns out to be more right. But again, as you saw, you might as well take a guess and be more right than Noah, um, because that's basically what it is, it's an educated guess. But you could see a above average precip for a good portion of the country. And, you know, if I were to say what's the best weather source out there, definitely Noah. The Weather Channel is, I mean, their fall forecast was just like a butcher. And then, um, you know, they, at least Noah has a historical better record. So um, I will catch you all guys on the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys uh, later.